Hey everybody, it's your old pal Robert from thrillright.com. How you doing? So today I'm here at the Tahunga Wash in Southern California and uh, this flood control channel, not necessarily the most uh, pretty thing to look at at first glance, but uh, what we're gonna see here is something called the Great Wall of Los Angeles. Uh, this is known as the longest mural in the world and it's actually something that started out as a mural depicting the history of California. So in 1974, uh, I believe it was the Army Corps of Engineers contacted Chicana artist Judith F. Baca, a well-known muralist, to uh, do something to kind of beautify this uh, rather unpleasant looking uh, structure. <laughs> and uh, what started out as a mural to chronicle the history of California from prehistoric times up until about 1910 has since grown over the summers uh, post the completion of the first section. Uh, more mural has been added to it. I believe it now goes up into the uh, late 80s and maybe 1990s. And the plan is to continue it all the way to the present, ultimately creating a mile long mural. But I believe right now it's over half a mile long. So there's plenty to see. So let's go take a look. So here we are looking north, I believe, in one of the uh, less attractive parts of the, uh, the channel. And on the other side is where the pretty begins. So we're going to head that way. Yeah, so here we are looking uh, south. And it looks to be where at the uh, tail end of the mural. We'll uh, take a look at some of the credits there. A little more detailed explanation about the artwork here. But uh, yeah, I think we're going to walk to the far end where uh, prehistory begins and follow it along back here. Oh, and if you're looking to find this uh, mural, it is at the intersection of Oxnard and Coldwater Canyon Boulevard here in North Hollywood. Uh, that's where you'll find a way to access the park that runs uh, parallel to the mural. All right, here's all the details. The Great Wall of Los Angeles, the half mile long mural on the history of California, depicting prehistory to the 1950s, which is a work in progress. The mural is a landmark to the history of America and California and a monument to interracial harmony created between the youth who participated, begun in 1976 by distinguished UCLA professor Judith F. Baca and the co-founder slash artistic director of the Social and Public Art Resource Center, SPARC. The Great Wall of LA employed over 400 youth and their families from diverse social and economic backgrounds, working with artists, oral historians, ethnologists, scholars, and the community members to determine its content. And you like that. And it ends with her quote, the purpose of any monument is to bring the past into the present to inspire the future. Amen to that. So we are at the, the end of the mural and uh, now I'm just walking along a nice little park pathway that uh, again runs parallel to the mural. It's too bad we can't get into the, the channel itself, but I understand that would be a bit of a health risk especially if a sudden flood came along. Although here in Southern California, this seems like a very unlikely occurrence. Just taking a glance over as we walk towards the far end, it's uh, interesting to see. They don't shy away from some of the darker moments in uh, California history, which is good. We have to uh, learn from the mistakes of the past to avoid them in the future. So as I understand it, the Great Wall currently runs over 2,700 feet long involved more than 400 youths who volunteered to assist in the painting and uh, has, uh, <laughs> has required over 600 gallons of paint to complete. That's impressive. The first leg of the mural was completed again in the summer of 1976 and included uh, 80 youths referred by the Criminal Justice Department, 10 artists, and five historians who uh, all worked under Judith Baca's direction for that first first run which took uh, took the history from again dinosaurs to 1910 and then the subsequent summers the additional decades have been uh, added on to it nice we're almost at the start of the mural just taking a look back at the well landscape pathway that runs alongside yeah it's a pleasant little stroll not a bad little half mile hike at all just walking down off the path and right up to the fence 
a little bit of a closer look. Yeah, there it is. Prehistoric California, 20,000 BC. Well, I guess we're not going to go quite far back as dinosaurs, but uh, yeah, look at that. We got some, looks like a ancient capybara of some kind and a uh, saber tooth critter. Big woolly mammoth, oh yeah, the La Brea tar pits. And then moving, jumping forward a bit in time, the Chumash village, 1000 AD. A lot of Chumash history all along the Southern California environs. And uh, I'm just gonna cop to this right now. My knowledge of California history is pretty poor. So I'm not gonna be able to shed any further enlightenment on some of the dates that are called out here <laughs> but it's going to be a learning experience for me because i'm sure i'm going to learn a lot that i'm going to want to investigate further so some sections you can get right up to the fence pretty easily some others uh, trees and whatever block your access but for the most part you can get pretty close and take a look at the take a look at the details the Portola Expedition of 1769, assuming that is the beginning of uh, the uh, Spanish conquests. And uh, the Legend of Khalifa, I don't know anything about. Well, there's a look at the indigenous people's perspective. Not a very happy one, unfortunately. Now, Unipero Serra. I think I'm pronouncing that right, but I believe he was one of the founding missionaries of a lot of the uh, missions here in California. And I think it was also pretty instrumental in introducing wine to California. Don't quote me on that, but I'm, I'm, uh, that sounds correct. <laughs> got the founders of Los Angeles in 1781, mulatto and mestizo descent. That is a, that's a term I've never heard before, mestizo. As a look at a traditional Mexican hacienda and then moving on to uh, what looks like the start of the Mexican-American War. A Sutter's Mill is another name that I'm familiar with but I have no idea what role that plays in California history. So Mifflin W. Gibbs, Mary Ellen Pleasant, and William A. Leedsdorf are names I am not familiar with. I'll have to look that up as well. And then, yeah, heading into the California Gold Rush. Unfortunately, another period that's uh, marked with uh, a racist background. Biddy Mason, AME Church, Joaquin Murrieta, Sojourners, 1868. And these are all historical details that are new to me. Yeah, so the building of the uh, railroads here by the Chinese, another sad chapter in our history, along with the uh, Chinese massacre of 1871 that was not not a proud moment in uh, in California's evolution the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo 1848 I have no idea what that treaty uh, accomplished but I'm wondering if it had something to do with the delivery of the US mail perhaps All right, getting into the land boom and of course the California citrus industry a huge part of uh, the growing economy of the area and uh, orange groves, of course, the forebearer to uh, what would become Disneyland down in Orange County. And then women get the right to vote. And of course, the only reason I know as much about the history of the red car line as I do is all well, thanks to Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And uh, if you'd like to know more about that, uh, that trolley system, Watch the film if you haven't already. <laughs> it's pretty great. <laughs> I like this depiction of uh, the youth team at LA Harbor. Not quite sure what that means. And you might not be able to make it out, but on the left-hand side, you see two people standing on some sort of elevator platform. One of them seems to be operating a camera. The person to their left is holding a little, some sort of a publication. And the uh, headline on top is S-P-A-R-C. <laughs> The initials for the artistic group that put all this together. Nice little hidden signature of the artist. And as we get close to uh, the beginning of the 20th century, there's a section that honors all the different migrant groups that have come to California. 
and the approach of the automobile and then finally World War One. Pretty big event in California history, especially for the automotive, or I'm sorry, the aviation industry here. And I'm also going to guess here that this is where the first leg of the mural was completed as they've got a list of all the artists that were involved in putting it together. And that's pretty neat. Lovely work, everybody. Well done. And moving on past World War I, it's like the Doughboys going off to war and women in the war industry. Wow. Uh -huh. Starting to approach the beginning of the uh, motion picture biz here in California. So that's a detail that I'm finding very mysterious and intriguing. Here we have a portrait of uh, good old Thomas Alva Edison, inventor of quite a few things. But on his right side, there's a floating Aztec pyramid that looks like, with a corn cob extending from the top, and a woman extending from the top of the corn cob that looks to be whispering something in Edison's ear. What could that be? <laughs> I'm most intrigued. I'm wondering if there was some Aztec technology that was invented and lost and then rediscovered by Edison that the Aztecs were never properly credited for, or the Mayans. Again, my, my knowledge of architecture also pretty weak. So I guess this part of the mural refers to the filming of the Great Train Robbery, one of the uh, early cinematic kind of landmarks. And if I'm remembering correctly, I think it initial screenings where there was a shot with a train coming right at the camera people got up and ran because they were so convinced a real train was about to run them over <laughs> and this personage William H or I'm sorry William S Hart not sure who he is but is he a distant relative of Jeff Goldblum's because he sure looks like it and here's another section of the mural that honors the artists and crew under the direction of Judy Baca who painted the next section, which were completed in 1978. All right, here we are moving into the, I guess, the Roaring Twenties and then Prohibition, <laughs> like Dom Perignon specifically called out on those champagne bottles. Very nice. <laughs> I'm uncertain what significance the Dunbar Hotel had to uh, California history. I'm wondering if it had something to do with jazz music, perhaps? And that's something to find out about. And of course, the market crash. Yeah, that affected the whole country, as well as California. Yeah, child labor, the Great Depression, another uh, another thing the entire nation went through together, but obviously California as affected as anywhere else. Dark times. It's good to remember, even though we're just coming out of a pretty dark period of time ourselves, uh, we've been through worse. It's hard to believe, but yeah. The Long Beach earthquake of 1933 is not one we hear too much about. Obviously, the big San Francisco quake in the 19 aughts, and then some of the more recent quakes. But uh, this one I'm not as familiar with. I have to look that up. And look at that half a million Mexican Americans deported from the Dust Bowl refugees. Grapes of Wrath, an amazing book, an amazing movie. I'm not, you know, a huge reader of the classics, but that's one I'd recommend. And here's another moment in California history, part of the national history as well, of course, but not something, uh, not something we ever want to repeat again. The Japanese internment camps that were set up here during World War II. And uh, we have somebody in our office, her, uh, I believe it was her, oh gosh, father or grandfather who was put in the camps. Yeah, really terrible. And here we got the next credit wall for the mural makers who completed this leg in 1980. I must say that uh, that image of Hitler is bone chilling, suitably so. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, pretty horrifying. Jeanette Rankin, that's another name I'm gonna have to look up. And of course World War II was an absolute horror, but it certainly did rally a lot of the nations of the world in a united fight that was well worth fighting. 
I'm not familiar with Dr. Charles Drew or Mrs. Laws, but it's clear they both did good things for us. Looks like the good doctor was involved in some kind of a breakthrough medical practice, perhaps? Or inventor of a, a medical technique, maybe? And then uh, Mrs. Laws fighting the good fight against fascism. And then over there, too, to the right, David Gonzalez of Pacoima, California. Huh. Yeah, the Zoot Suit rides I know a little bit more about. Uh, I believe these, this, these rides took place over several days in June of 1943. And they were, uh, they involved American servicemen and other LA locals attacking and stripping the clothes, which happened to be Zoot Suits, off of uh, Latinos, Mexican Americans, African Americans. Uh, ostensibly, it was about the rationing of fabrics during World War II, but it was, it was all just racial attacks. Really, really horrific. Yeah, Luisa Moreno and the Bracero Program. Also details of uh, California history I'm learning for the first time today. And a very sad reminder of all the uh, World War II Jewish refugees. And of course, California very much affected by the, uh, the big post-war baby boom. I think I'm at the tail end of the boomer generation. Kind of ages me, but I'm very amused by that ravenously hungry baby. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I could ever open my mouth that wide. And there's the credit sign for the mural makers, I guess from the summer of 1981, who added the latest extensions. Again, bravo, all of you. So yeah, we're just starting the last section of the mural that's been completed to date. And it begins with a farewell to Rosie the Riveter. It looks like she's being sucked into a television screen and I'm not quite sure why. I guess that was uh, women returning to the homestead to be part of the development of suburbia. Yeah, tract homes, etc. sprouting up all over the place. And there he is. My puppet nemesis, Howdy Doody. Look at that maniacal grin. Terrifying. <laughs> yeah, the Red Scare, McCarthyism. Boo. Another unfortunate part of California and the nation's history as well. Huh. Division of the Barrios and Chavez Ravine. I'm only familiar with the ravine because of its proximity to Dodger Stadium, which you can see up there on the hill on the right. And I'm guessing this had to do with uh, forcibly separating uh, Latino community in some way. Well, there's a bit of a happier thing to celebrate, the birth of rock and roll, which of course happened all over the country, but is a big part of transforming popular culture here in Southern California, and uh, definitely the automotive culture as well. And I guess that's supposed to be uh, Elvis front and center there, and maybe Chuck Berry sort of behind him? Or not sure. Maybe they're just generic rock and roll figures, who knows? <laughs> so, Daughters of Bilitis, or Bilitis, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that correctly. Uh, I believe, again, the first uh, major lesbian rights group to form, and the Mattachine Society, that is brand new to me. I do not know what that uh, society stands for, represents, or fights for. I had the incredibly rare and fortunate privilege to watch Allen Ginsberg actually perform Howl uh, with a hurdy-gurdy back in the 70s. I was a very young high schooler. <laughs> I did not appreciate at the time um, what an honor that was, but uh, yeah, that was pretty incredible. So yeah, we're, uh, we're pretty much catching up to the present here on the timeline. And it's kind of sad to see that Asians gain citizenship and property is this far along on this mural. Pretty, uh, pretty hard to believe. And here we are, back to the beginning. Or the end, I guess it would be. And not much of a sports fan, so I can't identify these various athletes. But obviously they are Olympic champions who uh, broke some barriers between 1964 and 1984. All right, I think that's gonna bring this one to a close. So thanks for coming along. And again, I'll apologize for my glaring 
ignorance about so much of California history. But I know I learned a lot today and learned about things I hope to learn more about down the road, and I hope you did too. So, uh, yeah, we'll catch you in the next one.